Do we have anybody that wants to do a lightning talk? Oh, Willie wants a lightning talk. Hey, Joseph, this is Mike Snitzer. Um, I would like to do a lightning talk to kind of bookend the earlier conversation about LTS and um, Red Hat and what we do with kernels and stuff. It was right at the end of that session and we didn't <laughs> get, a, get a response in to uh, James's question uh, of Red Hat and what we do. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. I mean, I don't need to do that right now if, if Willie wants to go first. I'm, I'm good either way. No, you're, you're good, man. Go ahead. All right. So um, James asked the question, you know, SUSE and, and other corporations, like they've kind of gravitated towards LTS and making use of that for the basis for their kernels for long stream, uh, long term support. And, um, so Red Hat just, I'm an upstream maintainer for Device Mapper, right? And so my contribution to LTS is um, in terms of tagging commits in upstream Device Mapper as the changes go in, that should be for stable. And I do that religiously. Um, and then that triggers a cascade of Greg, Pro Hartman, and, and, and others at, on the uh, Linux stable project you know, to, to CC in response that when the thing gets backported and the number of uh, failures and rejects and, and that cause patches to get dropped and um, the nurturing that goes on just as an upstream maintainer, that's all I can handle to be quite honest. Um, it, there's a lot of um, work involved in supporting that and, and making sure that a patch isn't skipped um, and, and that kind of thing. So I don't, I don't question that there's a significant effort that is required of those contributing to LTS, but um, Red Hat just isn't tied to LTS. So the way we contribute is by way of like people like myself contributing in terms of upstream maintainer. Um, I don't know, I mean, that's not a great answer, but we don't tether our product release to LTS like the other you know, distros do. So um, I just wanted to offer that as an ex explanation for what Red Hat is actually doing as it relates to kernels. Okay, thank you so for we sharing. Re sure, we, we rebase each subsystem individually, basically. Each subsystem is able to kind of have its own autonomy. So like Device Mapper, does its own thing, Block Core does its own thing, XFS does its own thing. And so yeah. it's no one release that actually it, it, we test against, so. Yeah, that's a good point. And I, I've been talking to SUSE engineers and I, I mistakenly said that SUSE follows LTS uh, and it was wrong and they, they corrected me. But if, uh, what, I, what we talked about is that if uh, SUSE or Red Hat would not, I understand that they, you don't want to follow LTS because you don't want a stream of fixes from all the subsystems, and I understand that completely. Uh, but for, let's take example XFS. I was talking about XFS and SUSE engineers. They do not have a lot of XFS and uh, resources. So they do not want to follow LTS. But if they would have chosen uh, a kernel to be based on that is the same as LDS or close, doesn't matter. They can work together in collaboration with the community uh, developers working on XFS for LTS and just test together, collaboratively uh, choose the patches, test together and apply the XFS LTS patches onto your kernel and it can be LVM or any other uh, subsystem that RHEL keeps relatively uh, updated. That's, so here, here's a question for you. Are the LTSS patches marked with fixes? Or, or does it matter say, there, are, there are in LTS? No, that's no, 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 no. That wasn't my question. My question was, are the LTSS patches marked as fixes? Not always. So and then the next question would be, why not? Because the fact that they are in LTS means that there are fixes. No. 
Uh, well, that's not, well, a lot of them are marked no, as no, no, no. fixes. That's how they got into stable. We're not wandering down this road. I'm fixing to go home. Next. Yeah. Willie, you're up. Uh, this one's more organizational than anything. Uh, so um, for those who aren't aware, Plumbers is going to be in, I want to say October in Virginia. I it was November. November in Richmond, Virginia. Yeah. Um, for the last two years at Plumbers, we've had an MM track. Uh, Blasphemy and I co-ran it in, in, in Ireland. Um, we are not planning on submitting one this year. Uh, two reasons, I mean, originally, you know, we've only done it for two years. Uh, we started doing it initially because COVID, so we didn't have LSFMM, so there's really no, no other way for the MM people to get together and have the kinds of discussions we've had this week. Um, we decided to continue it in Dublin, even though we had, we had previously met in, in California, because it being in Europe meant that we were able to, that some people were able to get to Dublin who couldn't get it to California. Um, so it, it seemed worth doing last year. I don't see there being a particularly large number of people who can make it to uh, Virginia in November who couldn't make it here this week. I mean, I'm sure there's some, but uh, it doesn't seem compelling to either myself or Blastomil to submit uh, a proposal for a, a session, and so we're not planning on doing it. If anyone thinks we're making a horrible mistake, now's a really good time to shout at me. Everyone's looking bored. Okay, great. Or, um, or they should actually volunteer to uh, organize the mini con, right? It doesn't have to be you all. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't have to be me at all. But so, but if, if if nobody knows that the people from last year aren't going to bother doing it this year, then it kind of falls on the floor because they don't know that they were supposed to step up, which is actually what happened the previous year. We no, none of us knew that nobody else was doing it, so we didn't get one. Um, there is no self-interest in my comment at all because I'm not in any way associated with the planning committee of plumbers at all. <laughs> but uh, I would prefer if we had one. Uh, no, it's fine, obviously, if, uh, if there is no reason for you to do one. But uh, just speaking for the committee, I think we'd be delighted to uh, have you. And Mike is the organizer of the micro-conference track this year. So bully him into doing one. <laughs> Thanks. That was it. Perfect. Does anybody else have a lightning talk they want to get through? All right. Cool. Uh, we're going to have a wrap up now. So we're going to have the uh, track leaders come up and give a sh quick summary of what was discussed, you know, plans, what, you know, how everything went, that sort of stuff. So let me get Amir or Nicola if you're around here or Dan. And uh, Martin or Daniel, whichever one of y'all, and other Martin, both Martins. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, so I would just say that quite a lot of discussions were useful. Um, it seems that we have landed into a new age where we are actually removing code than much more than adding new code. A lot, a lot of technical depth that we have to pay. We have discussed to hopefully not have documentation discussion next year again without too much work behind. And yeah, hard to summarize all of them, but uh, I do rely on, on Jonathan to have a very good and <laughs> decent coverage. Just to remember what we were discussing. And yeah, very productive. Uh, thanks to everybody. It was really cool. Um, yeah, uh, my personal feeling is that it was very successful, uh, that we were able to make progress in, in, uh, on several things. Uh, we had a, uh, one thing we had is a meetup of several Fuse developers um, uh, discussing uh, few, techno few uh, emerging Fuse technologies and how they all uh, uh, emerged together. Um, in the VFS, uh, uh, we had Al participate and uh, contribute, and uh, and having Leonard uh, here as the user space uh, representative really helped uh, some of those discussions uh, going because we were not talking to ourselves. 
Uh, we were actually having an, a dialogue uh, with user space, and that was, it's, I'm not saying it's, it's something generic, it was specific sessions that question answered, okay, this is how we're going to do it. Uh, specifically, like a, a K-thread freezer, uh, we have this idea, the kernel should notify the user, no, no, it doesn't work like that. No, everything is much simpler, and it happened even uh, more than once. Uh, we discussed uh, also in the session for VFS uh, a use case, a use case of containers, mounting images. Um, it's a complex thing involving several subsystems and having everyone together in the room, understanding all the moving pieces, uh, having Ted and uh, Derek go on record saying that if you FSCK an image, it's okay to mount it. They're going to regret this. Um, <laughs> but but uh, things like that. Uh, apart from that, uh, a few sessions like on IOMAP conversion, uh, showing that we had some progress. Uh, a lot of people, I, I went around here, asked all the people that uh, led sessions, what you take away? And basically, I got a lot of... Uh, uh, underline that we know how to make progress. And, and this is the resolution of many sessions that we had. So, I mean, that's more than we can ask. Uh, in the hour track, we had a couple of, well, three really, really productive days, I find. Um, we had some really old friends that we brought back to life, I hope, uh, copy offload and hinting and, you know, a lot of things we've been talking about for a decade that I think we're, you know, a little bit closer at actually finally resolving. And um, new interesting topics. Yesterday was mostly dedicated to NVMe. Um, we've been pretty much throughout the whole storage stack the last few days, um, both SCSI and NVMe and Block. and. Um, I think it's been super, super productive. Um, on the BPF track, we had about 38 topics, so that was a lot of topic we went through. Um, so I think the first one is uh, we got an official BPF anthem. Um, great talk, uh, highly encourage you guys go to look at it again. Um, we also have a lot of discussion on KFUNC, um, how BPF can write a data structure map um, in BPF alone and new hash algorithm. Um, another important one is the GCC uh, support in BPF. I heard that was, uh, it went pretty well and I talked to someone else in Compiler Guide, there was a lot of uh, hallway discussion that got a lot of things resolved. It. I think that was good. Um, so we also talked about uh, BPF new way of passing BPF capability, uh, citing the BPF program. Um, so second day we talk about BPF, um, how BPF extend to other subsystem. Uh, I think uh, one of them, one of the highlight is uh, the fields BPF. There was a lot of uh, very engaged discussion. Uh, that was exciting. Uh, and also we have um, BPF running as a scheduler. Um, we, we had a, um, we talk about the progress and uh, what concerns people have in the community. So um, going back to the networking where BPF uh, has a lot of use case already. So we still keep finding new use case and new extension there. So um, one, of, one, one of them is about T6. So it's a new way to attach TC program. So a big discussion there is about having a more meaningful way to, to define the ordering on attached multiple BPF program at TC. So another good one is XDP. So I think XDP is a BPF extension to the network driver. So it was introduced, uh, I think it's like six years ago. We still find new use case now to, to, to further extend it. So it was, it was, uh, it was pretty interesting. Um, so on the last day, I think we have a good discussion on BPF CI. So BPF CI is a um, continuous testing infrastructure. So that's an important part of the BPF ecosystem. It helped maintain a lot on, on maintaining the code base and fastly changing code base. So um, 
we talk about the progress we made there. So we support new um, CPU architecture. And um, I think most of the people got a chance to give it a try to, to, to try how to test thing in the CI. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And uh, I, see, I see a lot of uh, old faces and also I see some new faces. So hope to see all of you next year. Awesome, thanks guys. All right, so that's a wrap. Um, thanks everybody. Uh, this year we tried something a little bit different. Uh, we added, as you might notice, we added about 60 to 70 more people than we normally have. Uh, the goal of this was to allow for us to have more new people and kind of like integrate more uh, younger faces, new faces into the community and kind of let them uh, join us here. I personally think it went really well. Um, I don't feel like, one of the things that we always talked about before was like we wanted to keep it really small because we wanted it to be intimate and we wanted to make sure that we were still making progress and that it didn't get too big or unwieldy, um, which is valid and I, I agree with wholeheartedly, but um, you know, it kind of got to the point where it was just like the same people showing up and especially as we like added more, well, adding BPF, like it kind of constrained everybody else. Um, I'm of the opinion this worked really well. Uh, I haven't heard any negative comments. If you have negative comments, keep them to yourself. No, um, let me know. Uh, if we want to go bigger, we could probably, I think this is a good sweet spot. I know Willie has said 200 people before, but at some, I've, I don't know. But uh, I could be convinced either way. Uh, the nice thing is I don't have to be convinced because I'm not doing this again. Um, we have to pick uh, the program chair for next year. Um, usually we rotate this around the different groups. So, you know, file system did it, MM did it last. Uh, I don't think BPF has done it at all. So I think BPF is on the, the chopping block. Um, so do you guys want to right now throw a victim or do you want to like discuss it amongst yourselves and get back to me? All right, discuss it amongst yourselves and get back to me. Um, for next year, Trisha has said that we have the option of co-locating with OSSCon again. Um, I know for them that makes it easier because then they don't have to like, when we go separately, it's nice. We all love like being by ourselves, but it means that those, um, they have to go to the hotel, all the different hotels, they have to get quotes, they have to do all this thing. And so when we co-locate, it just makes their life easier. Again, I'm of the opinion this worked really well because we have been separate from everybody else. It's not like we've had to deal with anything. Um, and, the, and you know, of course, the venue was beautiful. Uh, next year, OSS Con is in, in Seattle. So if, again, if that does not appeal, then again, I'm, I'm open. Again, I don't get to make the decision, but if you would rather not be co-located or you have strong feelings, please let me or the next PC uh, know. And uh, yeah, it is super expensive. I think so. It's gonna similar time of the year. Yeah, so early early May. Um, yeah. Does anybody have any feedback or anything they want to yell at me right now? I think it would be really nice if we can get uh, side rooms where we can probably sit down or something. I, it was pretty hard to have side uh, conversations where you needed to whip up a laptop or something like that. Um, that's all. That's oh, and it'd be nice to be able to get beer, too. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody, for coming. This has been really great. Thanks to the, P uh, the whole program committee. Like, I honestly just deal with logistics. I didn't do the schedule or anything like you guys all did that. Uh, so thanks to y'all, and thanks for everybody for coming. Appreciate it. Hey, Joseph.